for chaos. I'm Odie Pixel, and I am, of course, joined by the one and only Fog. The draft uh, is underway. Ready to go, Fog. I'm excited for this one. I've, I'm excited. I've not got to see any DC or Execration for a long time, to be fair. I've been a while since I've casted some of these guys. I don't think we got to cover any of their games, right? No, I don't think so. I'm always hyped to cast me some Bulba. Bulba, some Mason. My buddies here. Yeah, with some speed drafting as well. Yeah. No hesitation from either side here with these openers. This, is the, uh, this was the Epicenter EG opener right here. The Sanking Puck every single game they did. Very strong team fighting heroes. I like that opener a lot. The bands very appropriate from both teams. Execration's most played, played heroes are the Night Stalker and the Knicks. Have and we, have we seen, I wonder DC if, is the Meepo and Bat. I was going to say, in like every game against DC is like Meepo always banned. Like, is everyone just always banning the Meepo? I'll tell you right now, have they are it. not. They're not. Not everyone is banning it. Actually, nobody's banned it. Oh, really? No one has. So it's actually execration coming in. <laughs> a lot of respect for their buddy, right? For sure. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? They used they to play. They know him really well. They used to have him. They used to know the power of the Meepo with him. They, yeah. So they do not want to risk letting Abed getting it. I mean, Abed probably would be saying, like, I know these yeah. guys. Me Meepo, I reckon, instill fear in their hearts. So, <laughs> yeah, banning that first. Makes sense. Clockwork first pick is the big... The big, like, whoa. From execration. Call it DK. And as DK. Well. Yeah. They've really been liking the DK. That is one okay. thing I know. I oh, okay. when I was looking at them. They've been picking it first too with like sinking and stuff. So this time around, I guess they wanted to prioritize the clock. I'm, I'm not really seeing a big reason why they would just take it first. Ten seconds remaining. Has it been being banned against them? No. No. Oh well, LFY actually first two banned it against the both series. Oh, they must must have both the games. yeah some good power with the clock man. Yeah, they must. One of the, one of the strong ones. Huh. I'm gonna look back actually. More I mean, if LFY, no, it's good. You know, I'm gonna assume it's. You know That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Especially LFY. because of that. If LFY is banning it first, too, something's up with that hero. At least, especially. Have LFY played yet today? Have they still not lost a game? Good. Oh, they're probably playing right now, aren't they? I think they're playing right now. Playing it doesn't right say now. they've finished. It must be playing right now as well. Omni Knight ban from DC. They clearly did their homework. Another one of the execration specialties that they really like. Been last picking a lot of Omni Knight at least. The third, fourth ban. They just don't want to deal with some kind of cheese. Drow ban. Definitely um, DC. They're, they're a team to run some Drow strats. Yep. Especially once the puck's in there. I think that's the you know the flex pick. That's what D EG was doing a lot for yeah. Epicenters. The, the puck gets grabbed first too. Try to grab a Drow in the later stages and they can throw the puck in a lot easier. Bam from DC. See what they want to take away from this potential. Potential pushing and skirmish line if they have to got this DK. You can expect Execration to be wanting to grouping up. Yeah. Taking those towers. Some sustain here, I'll probably for Execration. Would be something next on the menu since they have a Dragon Knight lineup. I don't know if I have a Dazzle. Falling out of favor, I think only OG's actually picked it. Something like that along those lines. I mean, Oracle can be good if you have an Oracle player, especially versus Sanking Puck. A heavy amount of magic damage that you can negate. But they still just ban out the Venomancer from from Execration. They've also been highly favoring Venno, as a lot of teams have been. And they're playing with a double blink lineup as the Sanking Puck. So having you know no Venomancer makes a lot. Silencer. DC's really been liking this hero. Grabbing a lot of their games in the first two, even. Either like the Silencer Bat or something. The Bat is banned out. What other options have? I know they've ran, I believe, the Silencer Enigma as well. Well, that gives them a lot of high cooldown ultimates, though. I don't know if they really want to get stuck on that entire mentality. Do they do they pick up the Legion? DC? Is that is that one that they play around with? Pretty sure that one's fallen out of favor. I know Four yeah. of used to like to play it, but I think recently he's not really liking that hero too okay. much. Doesn't really fit the scheme of their games. Like they like being they're a very team fighty kind of team, really, and I don't feel like LC really suits that. As the Lich. The Lich. We've seen this one be very popular over the last few days. That's very strong here. Yeah, helps the lanes out a lot. Definitely just growing in popularity. So many buffs that come out, people just really like the new Chain Frost. Helps slows and it just guarantees your lanes. Makes it a lot easier to play. We'll have to definitely still worry about that. I mean, that silence definitely feels like that that pick is is, is going to be an issue for execration. I mean, you know, Lich himself is not going to be building anything any early on to deal with that global. So if he doesn't get that chain frost out, his 
potential is going to be limited in these fights. Yeah. I guess if, if he's at least there's a clock though to kind of like look for the True. back lines or from execution to find that silencer. Be it the case. Nice. I was talking to um, I was talking to Brax actually yesterday, and I was like, I think I think you guys should just pick Mason, Sven, and Lake and yeah, <laughs> pretty really. I mean, we're seeing that we saw the power of the Sven already twice yeah. today. It's I, this hero seems really really good, and I, I mean, I'm a little surprised it's been under the radar for a while because. He just all the, has all the tools to be perfect. It's this. It's core. He's got a crazy good stun. He's got a disable He's as got a core. It's a, a built-in battle fury. Yeah. His, he has an ult that just does a, 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 an insane amount of damage. I mean, we've been saying it, it for a while, right? This incredible armor buff to everyone. This hero is great. From like right before Dreamly, when that yeah. big patch hit, when Sven got that strength on his ult. Yeah, with the ult. Everybody yeah. was like, "Oh my God, Sven!" But we weren't even seeing it get picked up. That, that did get much. nerfed a bit, didn't it? Right? Yeah. It like got initially, it was little. like ridiculous the amount of strength yeah. he had, and then they did change it. But it's still, yeah. It's still really, really high. Good. And really I mean, good. the thing is that he's he's a BKB building hero. Yeah. Who also sieges towers, but also fights really well. So he like he ticks off so many of the markers that you want that you're carried to do. Execration. What's their plan for the Sven? Obviously at the moment, I mean the the cogs slightly slightly annoying. They they do have ways to to make yeah. it hard to get to his target. They they're gonna have the the slow and such from the the dragon form, dragon knight. It can be annoying for sure. Clockwork's one of the best heroes versus the Sven. Yeah. They've got so many different ways of initiation though right now, PC. Be it the sanking of the puck, the Sven can follow up, and then they've a lot of initiation and counter initiation. Execration. Okay. Gets uh, himself the void. They have the void lich combo. They at least have that, but the rest of the there's nothing else that goes inside the chrono. DK and Clockwork yes. commit nothing inside. Well the they, DK in his range form. Yeah, I guess. DK was for range form, sure. Uh, but for sure that's still it's it's that never in itself is gonna be crazy amounts of damage. Yeah. To take down heroes at least. I mean, and the void, you, you can kite the Sven up, but at the same time, as you say, already with the da lack of damage, and, and obviously Sven being a Sven, one of those heroes that even if you chrono, if, if you manage to get the war cry out, it's still very hard to kill him. Yeah. If he's, yeah, as long as he's not far behind in terms of farm. They've got good ways of holding him down, though, now with chrono and with clock grip, the cogs can yeah. be very obnoxious, but. I just, just want to see a bit more damage. Yeah. For, the, for this last pick from Execration. and Definitely more damage. And the thing is that. DC has very good lineup to deal with Void. They have sure, they have yeah. two stu two guaranteed stuns and two huge silences, which a is lot like of extreme silence, versus yeah. Void. They actually still ban the Enigma, and even though they have Clock and Lich and Void for the BKB piercing disables on the Black Hole, it's still too much to deal with because of that silencer. And DC has really been heavily favoring that for four of. I don't know why Execration can finish it up here, but they still need that secondary support. Unless, I don't know if Execration wants to run the support clock and then put the Void in the off lane, and now they could still pick a safe laner. They um, haven't played it very often. So, the maybe, thing, so maybe they do do a support clock, but we'll see here with this last pick. And no, okay. So it, it, it's, it's just going to be the core cool clock and support Scarif. So Scarif definitely offering that high damage output that we said they were lacking. Very good with the Chronosphere. Instant silence for a lot Puck of as magical, well. yeah. I just, so, the I instant really silence like is pretty nice. And that. also, I believe, is this another new hero? But we had a sky yet. Oh, I don't think we have it. I sky. don't think we had, I had just a sky was looking yet. At it. Let's see. I think that was one of the new ones, wasn't it? I'm refreshing again. It That's is. A new one. Hey, new hero, ladies and gentlemen. So we had Clinks earlier. Another one done. And now we've got Skyrath. So yeah. now we've only got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten heroes that have not been picked in the Dota 2. And of course, now we have it. Nice. And uh, that, yeah, yeah, I think if, there's a, if there was a game to pick Scarif, yeah, there certainly seem to be good strengths for it here, so... Yeah, it's got strengths, they've got a little bit more team fighting stuff, but they've got no sustain with a Dragon Knight kind of pushing. I'm, I'm curious why they picked the Dragon Knight first, too, I guess maybe yeah. just because of the Puck, so yeah. they have that matchup, you know, the... Well, it's not an instant stun anymore, but it's a pretty good stun versus Puck, like that. Um, how does DC round it off? They take the Nature's Prophet, so a heavily pressuring offlaner really mess with Skyrath. I mean, Skyrath actually just gets owned by Nature's I mean, Prophet, yeah, like, that, the, the harassment in lane. Yeah, he is going to be able to zone that Sky back. I'm really liking DC's draft. I, I got to agree. I mean, I, uh, I'm at the moment, I'm the, on the Sven hype train, really. This yeah, me too. It's so good. The Sven hype train, I'm on the Sven hype train and the Silencer hype train, and I was previously on the Puck hype train during yeah. uh, 
during like epicenter and all that. And I just I look at DC's lineup and it's more well rounded. Execration they've got building hitter from the DK sure, but they're just like let's take a look at their actual like lockdown and disable other than ultimates. They've got the dragon tail and then other than that it's like chronosphere. Everything else they don't have like some kind of stun or something in these team fights. While DC has sanking stun, puck all spike puck spells, Sven spells as well. Definitely liking what DC's bringing to the table with their with their draft. Could we see uh, Execration switch something up in terms of the lanes? Is there any chance for them to, to do some sort of aggressive laning to go ahead to help with the span? And, I mean, as you say, maybe even to try and get a 1v1 matchup? But I guess even in a 1v1, does does the clock do that well against a Nature's Prophet? No, he gets no, he crushed. Doesn't. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah, he gets crushed. Because even if you do are able to isolate Nature's Prophet, well, yeah. He's gonna he's, he can just yeah, put or up. you can like sprout yourself and push yourself out of the cogs. I mean that's you probably want to sprout level four, to four but yeah, it's, you're just gonna get right clicked. And we've seen a lot of these uh, nature prophets. They start with boots, they get like orb of venom into phase boots, and they just right click you all day, and you can't really even. Let's see if Execration is able to make this draft work because they got a new hero, and we're they happy do. about it. Yeah, we're, we're Yetsi Scarf. We'll see if they can set it to 100 percent or zero percent win rate. Deal with this one. They're sending Clockwork to the safe lane with a poor man's shield. Honestly, they are doing it. Are they, they gonna are doing an aggro. Like they that. are, but as you say, this is what the, you're, you're going to be a little worried for this clock in the 1v1. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely worried. The thing is that they're trying to hurt the Sven, but DC's tri lane is pretty strong. Dual stun with the silencer. Silencer is really annoying the lane against, and it's not like Execration has a kill lineup. Um, do you think this is Execration? Looking to get the try v try, or do you think they were like, look, they pick Nature's Prophet? I think they're, they're going to get the. Lane. Okay. I think they're it's just, just the Lich Void and the Skywrath Clock bottom. Oh, okay. Lich Void top is fine because they can just deny and then they can actually punish the sun, uh, Sven a bit with it. But I mean, Skywrath started with a null, so he wants to do. He wants to be able to throw some heavy harassment, maybe start mid to give DK a good start and then move down bottom. But we'll see which one you want. Oh, DC actually finds the ward, so Mason's going to be able to. Clean that one up, get himself a nice bonus 100 gold. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this Sven. Sven silencer combo. Like Sven pops God Strength. Once he has, has like Mask of Madness, Blink. Blinks in, they pop global, and he kills anybody. Yeah. No, that's what I've been seeing happen a lot of times. They can do in reaction to that sort of play. And bottom lane, Raging Potato, harassed away from the rune. They'll grab that one decent. So they Scration will get the top in return, so they still do get the two. Swap in lanes? Don't want to put Mason versus that um that Lich Void. They're down toward bottom. They'll have four if get a TP scroll from the side and TP top. So that's better. Sven will be able to free farm like this, and Nature's Prophet doesn't really care if he's, you know, aggroed by any means. You know he's used treants to either pull the wave or last hit a little bit extra. But they're, they need Mason to have that free farm. It's a little bit of a better laning setup though for Execration. Because now they're at least having to have the Void free farming. Clockwork should get a, a little bit out of this bottom lane. It's not like they can just straight up kill him. Right now. Uh, mid lane at the moment. That's uh, going to be the way where Lumen's going to put himself and indeed he's with that null. Use that bigger mana pool to spam out as much as he can against Arbed to cause issues for him as he starts this lane against the DK. Pulls, which you said, being made by RR. We'll see how much Frev can do in terms of harassment for Nando. But with the poor man's and the Quelling Blade, kill it up to, to Honeywit hold his own lane. I mean, mid lane, this is definitely going to be annoying for Arbed. Yeah, how to guarantee that your DK yeah. has a good, good matchup. Start mid lane, Nando. Make it the south out to himself. Mumik again, wrapping around. No intention of leaving this lane anytime soon. As he really is just going full in. Making sure that Arbeck can't get anything. And it's certainly paying off in terms of the CS. James, 11 yeah. for 3. Puck, just 3 CS at the moment. I was just watching Bulba. He missed all the last hits inside of the pull camp. Missed all three. Oh, come on. Come on, Bulba. Come on, Sam. <laughs> I mean, the, the thing is that that's actually pretty important. When you miss all your yeah. last hits as a support in your pull, you just missed 80 gold. Stuff does add up. He's able to claim the bounty at least, but the chain keep chain. And he's drawing the void away from the lane. So Frev, getting a good time up here. Not too much CS at the moment on Nando. So at the moment, pretty much focusing, you know, having that sky at the mid at the start. 
James is the one to get this early farm. We'll see if Arbe can catch back up already now. So, I mean, as soon as Lumix out the lane, the space is there for Arbe to start farming back up a tree. Not so feeling too worried about the solo DK. Yeah. So now they switched it up. They know that Void's in a 1v1 matchup versus Nature's Prophet, and they know that Nature's Prophet's top, so Lich wants to be able to follow around that Sven. Fort's bottom starts denying a bit of farm from him. Thing is that now it's, it's you know, Nature Prophet's gonna be free farming top, and he's gonna be able to pressure the Void a bit, and even gonna be able to pressure the tower a good amount. And it's, you know, at least the Clockwork's gonna get a bit more out of this, but I still would think that DC is winning these three lanes. So, it, well, it feels two lanes. The mid yeah. lane is a little bit James' favorite because of the Skyra, so. Yeah, but I mean, with this out wave, Arbet, he, he is catching up. Yeah. He but that lead is, is going to be pretty much gone. Yeah, once you get the double null on the puck, you can start always last hitting and push, putting pressure, a little bit of prep K, but yeah. DK now level 4, that level 2 Dragon Blood, there's a way that you can harass him by yourself. If you want to go for a kill, you need extra rotate. Boba, heading down towards the bottom. So on level 1. Face boots now on Pharep. Be able to get the basis for it. A little bit more of a punch and try and keep Nando out of this lane. Nando has been able to get in and uh, keep the CS up as he's only just slightly behind Pharep at the moment on that top lane. So mid James with the lead. Arbed closing the gap though. Pharep didn't go for the oof build. I actually, I, oh, I, yeah, I really yeah, do yeah, like the oof build that I've been, that I've been seeing. Like, face boots. Been really strong. Just, it's not a crazy amount of damage or anything, but it just, it's just enough to be that annoying. Mid lane. Trying to make a bit of a go here onto Arbed. I'll get the kill. And the less getting a fair bit of harassment. Arbed. She purchasing another south. We'll try and stick around in lane, just get that sent out. Doesn't miss out on too much at all. Boba in the meantime, just jungling with Sandstorm while Mason's trying to pull and try to do this, some of this giant stack that's going on down bottom. He doesn't want Execration to be using that to pull the wood lane back all the time and deny himself farm. Just a Raging Potato, farming under the tower. Almost level 5 on the clockwork, so at least he's going to have a really good game. That's the one thing It's going to be very nice for them to have a farmed, leveled clockwork versus this Sven. He can make a lot of happen actually on the map versus like Silencer, Nature's Prophet, and Sven. First smoke rotation looks like it's going to be coming up to DC, but actually Clockwork able to find Dubu in the sidelines there. Stop the team. He's isolating Mason now. Great potato. Won't be able to find the kill so much, but putting a lot of pressure yep. onto DC. Pulling them both out of lane. The Shrine is up though now, so they will at least have that to fall back upon. Mid lane, Lumic coming forward again. Bulbul was there though, just to block off any sort of rotation that could come in. Bulba, they really want to go for the smoke play with Dubu and Bulba. It's that nighttime smoke that we see so often from many teams between that four and six minute mark. The first rotation would be unexpected. Let's see if Dubu can do anything. It's it's going to be hard with him on his own way here at the moment. In fact, Lumit's going to spot him out. He's putting a ward? Where's Dubu going? I'm just <laughs> chilling on the high ground. Dubu I mean, just walked over there without a ward or anything just to try to maybe go for like a wraparound play. But... Very hard as you said that's a wrap round. Okay. Yeah, with that as well, and Arbed on the high ground, they should be able to finish him off the curse, ticking him down. James, will he fall? Fairy Fire keeps fire. him alive though. He gets out. Sprouts there onto Lumix, so DC will get a kill. James, he's gonna look to turn, comes in with the dragon tail, all forward, burst through one of the charges on the infused raindrops. Arbed hiding in the trees. Have they got the damage to bring him down? They, they do. do. And Bobo's gonna live as well. So that was beautiful rotation from DC there. Nice timing too, as soon as they hit level 6 on Puck, as soon as they hit 6 on Nature's yeah. Prophet, Straight double up. ulti's thrown out, and that's the damage they need. It's just enough damage, though. You see how tanky this Dragonite is anyway. They need to have everything as possible, because if they don't have Bulba's stun, they don't have a hard lockdown of the Ninja Coil to have to be able to. Yeah, lots of damage being done by that Nature's Prophet. 1300 coming through at the 6 minute mark. Making all the difference there and setting up for a very nice play indeed. As we can see, overall, the 3 highest CS Slightly in a better position, evened off across the map for DC. James still at the top. The side lanes showing a slightly different story. Nando's going to come towards the mid lane. 
thinking about going for the Chrono player here, and he will get it straight in. Beautifully done there. Clips both of them. Silence there on Tarbed. Can they get Zuba as well? He's going to try for the TP out. Where's the bash? Oh, the There's bash. the bash. Execration. <laughs> Very nicely done there with that movement from Nando. Coming into the mid lane, they get the tower deny as well. Perfect Chrono play. Yep. That <laughs> bash. Zuba's probably feeling pretty bad about that. <laughs> He was, I think he was. I think he was stay safe. I don't, I don't know. He was. He was down pretty was quick. Right. I don't know. It, it would have been close. It would have been. Four of during this, get, we can get a lot of damage on bottom. I think that may be efficient towards mid. And Lynch has still just been sitting bottom the whole game. Been yeah. Eight minutes of him being down here, just trying to hold Sven off. Classic but... Lich item build at the moment. Yeah. No, nothing. Nothing. You know. <laughs> Mason though left that lane a while back. He's Mask of Madness farming top and jungle. Mason's feeling really happy right now. I'm pretty sure DC's in a very comfortable spot at this moment to get some base oh. going on. Bulba, finds Bulba. Rage of Potato very low. Easiest kill of his life. Rep and Duper coming for the action. Up plus two there. Oh, but it's actually there with the wraparound. Comes in with the two man dream coil. The Suns as well. Lumic taken down. James stuck in the trees. Bulba comes through with a power strike. And Dubu. Getting intel, like a snow tomorrow. That's going to be another plus two, up to eight. And DC with the movement through the jungle. Really catching Execration off guard there. Finding That's around a, the shrine as well and coming out on top. Yeah, that was the, you know, it's a core clockwork and he was running around at like 100 or 200 HP. And he's level six with phase boots. So it's his time to really shine and make those skills happen. So Fora might be the culprit here bottom. He's looking for it. There's no mana for the battle power cogs. Now there is with the stick charges. Fora should die here. No escape for him, especially with Lumix's presence. So, Execration, they able to get a kill back in return against GC. Of course, whilst this all is going on, Mason playing very nicely with the farm game. Gets a good timing on the Mask of Manus, straight into the jungle, as we can see both him and Ferev at the top of the net worth at the moment. And this pacing that Mason's going to be able to set, it's going to be quite hard for Execration to keep this spend tied down. Yeah. And there's some ancient stacks too. They're not massive, but they're two double stacks. Uh, Nando is the one who's still farming very well. You know, sticking toward the top, same thing with James. Almost with that Shadow Blade finished up for the Void. I interested build. I can't remember the last time actually I saw a, a Void go for the Shadow Blade first at least. But uh, as we've seen, especially with, with the fact that they did have that last big Scar, they do have a lot of damage to throw into the Chrono. So as long as they can they can catch these heroes, especially you know with like Arbed playing these squishier cores, this yeah. Puck. As long, if you lock him down, you're going to be able to kill him. So it's he's, all about the Chronos. Yeah, he's acting as that like counter, big counter initiator on the Void, or yeah. that one who finds it to split push, be it the Nature's Prophet or the Puck or the Sven on the sideline. Raging Potato, eating a lot of harassment bottom. He's able to break those base. Very speedy, able to get out. James and Nando should be able to take out this top tower quite easily now. Between the two of them. Mason's farms up the ancients. This circle being drawn by 4F looks like, he's like, yeah, we don't need to play around the top side really at all. We have more of the map to farm. Uh, we have like about two thirds, well, Execration only has a third of the map to farm. But definitely have a little bit more resources for DC. And very good warding from DC this game. One in parked up in the mid lane, one near the shrine. So you can see those rotate behind top or bottom. James and Potato getting this set up right now. No. He's got a Chrono. He's on his own, unlikely to have the damage, but indeed, yeah, bottom lane. They get the kill, but there's the return play from Arbed. Lays down the coil, Raging Potato falling low. Looks like he will just be able to outlift this curse as he survives. Indeed, it is just once again forever going down. Nando top. Do they have the damage? I don't think they do. No Nature's Prophet TP either. Fine. Uh, let's see who beef with those early game items. Having the raindrop, Keeler and poor Mass, keeping him alive from that sort of play. If Mason had God Strength there, it was perhaps a kill, but it was still on cooldown for a moment. Continuing that farm. Dooba making sure to continue stacking that Ancient. Oh, Dooba oh. actually gets rooted up and <laughs> clapped. Eat that Dooba. Oh, those pesky, pesky Prowler Shamans. We'll be able to get that triple stack going though, so Mason with his next God Strength will farm that. Might be able to stack both of them. No, no Mason not quite in nah, Mason not in time for it. Wanted to be able to clear the hard camp first and then refarm the hard camp afterwards. Look at the level 6 on RR. Execration. 
definitely up for some team fights. Yep, they've got Arcane Boots and Smoke on Lumic with the Chronosphere ready online. Yeah. I'm trying to blaze around that. Maybe ideally wanting to get that Shadow Blade on Nando before they bring the Void into the fray again. He's pretty far though. Yeah, it, uh, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it depends how much they want to keep the fights going in. But DC are actually the ones to smoke up here. Could get messy. They've got Global. They do have Global. They've got Veil as well done on Arbed. They see. They've got. Have a, they have so much information on the map too right now. They just saw the Clockwork top. Now they see Clockwork and Void and Skywrath top, and they see the Dragon Knight. But Courier was killed though. Where the hell did the Dire Courier die? I have no idea. That, did it didn't look that? like they were. I didn't even see anybody near it. <laughs> Who's feeding the couriers? Where the hell was it? I, I can't even find it. my courier on is not. Here we I go, mid lane. Yeah, open up with the burst strike. Epicenter as well. Sandstorms down. They are going to lose the Dragon Knight. Dream Coils connects onto both of them, are, are connected, taken down, Nando does get the Chrono, there's the old Mystic Flare laid down, they'll get up at in return, Raging Potato coming in from the sidelines with the hook shot, but Bulba's there, Burrow Strike trying to hold them back, but Mason gets bashed up, Execration taking down three with the time dilation now, looking towards Dubu, where's the bash, there's the bash, Dubu taken down as well, Execration get four, they do lose three in return. But overall, the numbers going their way, and as we're seeing again, just playing really nicely around these chronospheres. Did, did he get the global off late? Because I saw Chain Frost go off before while the fight was coming off. So I think the global actually came out a second late. That Chain Frost actually really hurt them, did a chunk of damage. But it was mostly the Chronosphere and Raging Potato coming in towards the back lines. So yeah, that wraps around. Right. Well, yeah. That is the scary thing. It's like that's what you're saying. Is the Sven can suffer versus those heroes because. They are naturally very good versus him, but Mason's still gonna, he's still trying to get online. He's still, you know, still not at his strength. Void is super strong lately. This hero has been really owning in the group stage, it does seem. He's been seeing a lot of picks though, so his win rate at first was like 90% and then it got picked like 15 more times in one game and dropped down to 60%, but. Shadow Blade finished up. He's got the Diffusal queued up too. Diffusal's gonna be really nice this game to remove that one try. Just that extra little damage he gets in the Chrono. I think CC's best bet really is to kind of pull a, an Empire and just, you know, get this Fem farming. Yeah. Get Keep his Mason blink out of the fights. Yeah, I mean, he's pretty much got it. And these, you know, getting the blink at this stage as well. Sure, it's great for fights, but it's, it's so efficient for farming. Having the yeah. blink of the Mask of Madness, you can just sweep up so much of the map. Then they have two ways to really start the fight, because uh, Puck didn't go for the Blink Dagger first. No. Abed usually tends to go for the Veil, so then Sven will have Blink, and I think Bulba's nearing his Blink too, so they'll have double initiations with the Global, which will be really nice for them to get. We see uh, Clockwork going for the Bone 7 build, the old school build. He's got an Orchid queued up. Okay. Look at this down bottom, Nando. On Does have ground. Chrono in 5 seconds. Could try and hunt Arbed down with the Shadow Blades back up in, 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 in 9. I think Arbed, is he, is he aware of something going down? He's still sticking around. Now he's going to go for the TP out. And not a moment too soon as Nando would definitely have come hunting for him, as you can see with the Shadow Blade and that Chrono searching the trees. But yeah, Arbed's already out. Arbed, Arbed, with, with, the, with the game set. James able to pick up this tier 1 tower mid. They didn't really see anybody else on the map on the side of DC, so they didn't know if anyone was behind it, but James was quite alone there. It was just Potato. The Orchid build gets this Orchid very early. It can make massive troubles for Abed in this game. Yeah, I mean, it's, can it's gonna be Abed pretty un unexpected. I, I guess now they'll basically the Oblivion stuff that's where what's going on. In fact, Rage of Potato straight in. There we have it. Finds himself forever. Forever. He's knocking back with the Sprout, and Rage of Potato will TP away. Unable to find the kill, and there too many things around. Straight Soak up the battery assault. Straight Orchid for 4 him. He's actually got it already. Nice and early. Going for that Shadow Blade next, so he can not worry so much about those Clockwork Cogs, unless he has Dust, of course. And, you know, so he can always split push. The Silence will be... The Orchid will be really nice versus the Void if they're able to yes. actually find him. But now they have to make sure to carry Reveal properly, since they're playing versus... You, know, you can see the Shadow Blade on the Void, so... We have to see Dubu and... I would see Dubu carrying sentries and Bulba probably carrying a Dust and or sentries. Bulba's nearly got his blink dagger. He's pretty much got it. So... Start to see that extra bit of catch to... to jump out and just to make sure they can... 
I mean, in a lot of these situations, really just stunning up and killing the Sky off at the start, as we've seen. So even if the Chrono does come out, there isn't the threat of that Mystic Flare coming down. And, uh, immediately wiping these squishier heroes like Arbed's Puck. It's caught in the Chrono. They're looking to set up for Nando. They see him bottom. Find him, though. Just yet. They do have, like you said, Blink, though. And he picks up the dust. Good job. Uh, the Dubu actually bought the dust. And the sentries. Yes. Good job, guys. Get him, though. I mean, they're, they're hiding in the tree line, Lumic. Nando. Yeah, they've seen him. There we have. There's the jump. They have enough damage to lock him down. Global's coming out. They really aren't messing around. There's the epicenter sentry there as well. Takes a lot, but it does get the kill done. Super worth it. They have to expend Global and Epi in Wrath of Nature, but they still have Coil. And during all this, Mason was farming. He ports down just in case, though. Like, that's a really smart thing a carry can do. You know, they don't know exactly what all of Execration was. They're taking a fight. So instead of Mason just sitting top and farming, he has to be at least in the area to fight. So TP's down even though he's not exactly needed. Very important for your carry players to recognize those kind of decisions. So Mick Abbott's, Abbott's going in with Mason. Yeah, straight away though, Reggie Pesetta comes in with a hookshot. Chain Frost is out as well. They're trying to pause DC back, but the side of Execration have already lost Lumi Carpe with the orb and the face shift will be able to jump out. DC, get any everyone out of there. Execration do put an end to the push. That was a that was a crazy dive. They at least get out. I looked like it could have yeah. been a pretty costly for DC, but with the void respawning a bit late and some maybe unfortunate bounces, they, Menandas hunting. they get lucky. If he finds Arbed, he could just straight up chrono and kill, but Arbed is getting all the way back. Spam ping's actually coming oh, they out. They, yeah. they were aware that Nando would be doing that. Knew something was up. And Nando, I mean, with this build as well, really investing in fully getting the... The Chrono off, he's going straight for the BKB, Street. dropping BKB. the defusal. Doesn't go, okay. So he's yeah. very concerned with all the amount of silences. The Orchid from each Prophet, the Global from uh, the Silencer, but then also just the amount of magic damage that DC does have. As your Orchid complete on Raging Potato. That's early, like 19 minutes. And a Clockwork Orchid, not yeah, bad. That's a Phase Orchid urn. Pretty damn good. And it's unexpected. I don't think they'll... I still don't think that they'll really know. I mean, he can kill Abed by himself here if he, if he finds a good chance. So he's yeah, Abed isolated. Especially with DD. He's, he's doing it! He's, he's gonna in. go for he's it! Got the he didn't get the cogs up though, and Bulba's yeah. there! Uh-oh! Oh no, this this could be bad for Potato yeah, they, now. They can turn around on him here. Oh, they get no. the silence. Oh no, he had great intentions, but he's <laughs> gone. He, I mean, he went for it. He went for it, dude. He went for it. They're able to get bottom tower at least out of it. Space so. created. Yeah, space. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, maybe overestimating the potential of the Orchid Clock as he does hookshot himself into his own fate. He's gotta be able to get those cogs off. I don't know, maybe he didn't. He definitely saw Bulba too, though. He just felt like he could get yeah, the puck anyway. Bottom left, top left. There's the jump. Global Silence comes out. It's not gonna be enough to save for Ep. Oh, yeah, not a good global there. It's just gonna be a global and retreat. Yeah, they're gonna wait. That's a few seconds wasted. Maybe, maybe this is where Execration can actually capitalize a lot on this. They have Global Online, they have all their ultimates ready to expend. Could see a smoke come out, maybe they try to get a good spot, but lanes are in a bit of trouble. Mid lane needs to get pushed out, otherwise it's way too obvious that they're going for a play. And the Lich is at least showing there, but I still believe that DC is going to know that a play is happening here, because no one else is showing and pu pushing them and shoving that lane out. I think they just got a glimpse of the Dragon Knight for a second. Yeah, uh, they, they definitely the saw point. Lumic coming around there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. DC knew. They knew something was up. Mason's on his bottom. own. And he, he does not have a TP. He looks very dead. Yeah, they got back. Coming, coming in, coming in actually, though. I mean, can they turn for Raging? They'll look to do so with James. There with the Dragon Tail. Raging Potato will go down. Mason surely doesn't survive it. Oh, with, wait, hang on. The armor. Forever with the Shadow Amulet. Dodge, they could have get him out. That dodged the hit, didn't it? I believe so. He looked shadow like Amulet and he managed to dodge something. Mason survives Forev. Definitely Forev though with that play, keeping his man alive. Beautifully done there. I was trying to refresh the stream Nando's to see if it dodged it, but I couldn't find out in time. <laughs> Nando was so ready to just drop that chrono in the tree line that did cancel cast it. That was... Okay, very clutch. That extra bonus strength that Mason gets from popping God strength actually makes him live, and the shadow amulet usage from Forev. Very, very clutch. Go straight up to the top, sweeping in. Sweeping in. Has the Corona? No, no follow up at the moment.
could try for a Dubu kill. There's TP's coming. He, he's, he's gonna going for it. For yeah. He should get it. Yeah, one bash is all that he needs. He'll get a couple of them. Does take the Dubu kill. That's the Chrono down for two minutes, though. This could be where now DC makes something happen when uh, Dubu responds to go back online. They know that Chrono was just used. Make sure they get the lanes out, though. That's what's important. Yeah, look at Dubu drawing on the map. Mason. He's like, push out bottom lane with Abed, and then we can actually try to make a smoke play and wrap around to go for that mid tower. At least that's what I understood it as. Yeah, Mason's gonna BKB as well. He's yeah. Put a couple of gold away from it. So that'll be there ready for the next push. God strength back up. Yeah, whether they want to push, whether they want to take Roshan. Definitely two opportunities whilst that Chrono is unavailable. Look like, yeah, this is what they're doing. Again, the BKB bottom lane is now pushed out properly. The option. Saying. They are gathered. Boom. Chrono still on cooldown. Got it. Seize the opportunity. Bulba drops a dust for his buddies. Abbott grabs it. Warrior continues to shove that lane bottom. So we get a good fight. See what kind of jump DC can get from this high ground. Raging Potato out on his own at the moment. Oh, they're going to find him. Oh, Dubus was just on the breaks. outside they of it. The area now. Yeah, okay. there's the jump. Whoa, he just get the hook shot off in time. The stun still connects. It looks like it will be Reggie Potato, the one to be in trouble, though, as the war cry comes out from Mason, allowing Freya to have that movement speed to maneuver his way away from the clock. DC get themselves the kill. Same time, though, Bulba did get taken down in the middle lane. But it was, it did, they did have they to commit the Chain Frost. Chain Frost, yeah. DK ulti, and Skywrath ulti for Bulba. That's a lot for Bulba. Yeah. DC again. And that's very close. Definitely making the slightly better trades. I mean, the clockwork got Orchid and he's died, I think, three times? Yeah, Twice? It's, three times? I mean, I guess this, this is the thing with this. When, whenever you, you're playing a hero and you rush the Orchid, there's, there's just this very specific period of time that you have to do something with it. Otherwise, you're getting to the point where Arbed is going to have a Yule Scepter pretty soon. And then suddenly the, the effectiveness of this Orchid is it, just not going to be that massive at all. You know, you've got BKB on the Sven, yeah. Shadow Blade on the Nature's Prophet. Lots of ways of disengaging, that even if you're silenced. That tends to be the reason why we don't see yeah. that build too often. We usually see like the Blade Mails, the Force Staffs, just because it suits your actual job in the game. Like, sure, okay, the Orchid, he can get pickoffs on the sides if he's able to do it right when he gets it. But then if they do get those, like, duels and everything, then that's actually becomes a useless item at one point where it's just like we actually wasted so much gold and he could have been having higher impact. And he's unable to make it work. If he gets a couple kills with it, it we could definitely say that it paid off, but so far, absolutely not. Nice him. A little space in the world down here as he claims another tower. Nando does have Chrono back up. So we'll see if they're able to get themselves that perfect fight, but there we have it, Arbed. With that Yule's complete, it's going to feel a lot safer around the playing field now from this moment onwards. Yeah. And that's, he's kind of missed his timing window already as the clockwork with the Orchid. Maybe, I mean, you can still find like Bulba, but other than that, the Orchid isn't really there to kill, kill any of the other heroes. Like, what, he's not going to Orchid for Furion to kill the Furion. Not the ideal usage. So BKB finished on Void. Looks like. Creation's trying to use all their ultimates, trying to take advantage right now, but Global is online. There we go, Global out, so there's no chance for the Chrono. Mason's got vision on it, the stun comes through from Bulba. That's going to be one down. BKB's coming out from the boat for them. Sprout there, onto Lumic, holding him in position. He'll try and turn the Mystic players, not enough damage. He's going to get taken out. Chain Frost will get thrown out in return. Raging Potato comes in, will be able to bring down Forev. They get Poseidon from Bulba though, bringing Raging Potato down low. That Chain Frost did a lot of work. But still, Mason's alive. He's chasing down the potato. Potato a little bit too quick for him. It was a third. James jumping forward now, entering into the fray. Can he get a lock onto anyone? Doesn't look like he can. I think DC should be happy with this. Try to get out. Yeah, three for two trade. Still, one of that to favor DC only slightly. You can see with the golden XP, pretty close. That hope that instant global by Dubu was perfect. Yeah. Void yeah. unable to get Chrono. If he's, got, if he's able to get Chrono there, it, could be a, it, should, it would probably be a completely different fight because Execration, the, the Dragon Knight and the Clockwork are still really hard to bring down, especially the Dragon Knight. With Lich Armor, sitting at like 30 armor and a BKB, so that magical community. 
Nice thing we I actually did not point out during the uh, draft is, you know, the Lich was picked up kind of early and then last big Nature's Prophet. Those Treants actually soaked the, almost the entire Chain Frost. There was, you know, because you get the plus four Treants summoned, there's nine Treants instantly whenever a Chain Frost pretty much thrown out. Pretty cool kind of counter that DC is running for in that different path. Racing with his build as well this game. A soak Karas. A little different to what we're seeing earlier from Rezo, where Rezo loves to get his crit. And Mason uh, gearing up for something that's going to better benefit his team. And Especially if they get chronoed and, and great for the pushing as well. Yeah, great for the pushing, great for his teammates. And I mean, this doesn't help versus the slow of the chain of the Lich armor, but you know that minus armor at least kind of makes it so it's not really there anymore. And smoke up in fact from execration is. So as you mentioned, the way that last fight, when they do still have that Chrono, they didn't get the chance to use it, but... Kind of Windows gone again as Dubu has the Global Silence back up. Yeah, it feels like it's... It feels like it's up so often, even though it's a two minute <laughs> cooldown. James, level, level 18 now. So he's got the level 3 Dragon form for that slow that they get from the Frost Dragon, and almost has a Halberd finished up, so... That'll be very useful versus Mason, both of them in conjunction. To at least kite him. And they're building a solar crest as well on the clockwork, so they're gonna have a lot of evasion stacked up versus the Sven. Yeah, obviously, though, in the Perez build, he can look to get that Bloodthorn done yeah, eventually. That's very true. First of all, he's looking to try and get that BKB found out. Nan Nando. Keeping down again. I mean, DC seems to be pretty aware of these movements, immediately backing off in that top lane push. DC feeling good amount in the lead. They're not huge, and you know, it's only 2k lead, but they picked themselves up a gem so that they can not worry so much about that annoying Shadow Blade Void and also not letting Execration get deep. Execration did make a smoke rotation earlier, so they probably expected some wards. So far, Execration has no wards on the map now. They're trying to be able to push these lanes out, but it's hard for them. Like, if you look at their, their draft, who's the one who really pushes the lanes out and wants to be able to help them set the fights up? It's only really Dragon Knight who forces lanes out hard while you look at DC they have Sanking, they have Puck, they have Sven, they have every one of these heroes shoves lanes out and makes them take fights in better positions in comparison. And though, we just spotted out by this ward, he did time walk into this and indeed DC want to capitalize on his trade away with the Forest Trap, the God Strength, he's got Bridging Potato, hook shots, simply hook shots into an epicenter, Execration just lose two like that. DC with the board game, with the quick reactions, just blow them up immediately. Yeah, gem. Gem and those, the vision advantage. That's what we talked about in the last series. The vision in these games is so damn important at this high level. Oh, they're done. Oh, Lane Lumic. Didn't even get the deny. There's a chance for it there, but he just lets it go. DC get another tower. And they also get the Roche as well. Keep thinking you're saying, you're saying Lumi. I'm like, Lumi? Lumi? Where's Lumi? Lumi? So DC overall though have been, have been playing really smartly in the places that they take fights to. Every single time it's been them on the high ground when Execration takes the fight, be it near the shrine that one time that happened here, which we're looking right now, and then just before on the enemy shrine. It's just high ground advantage is super important in Dota because you get the vision first. Exactly how the fight's going to play out at the start of it. That's what Nando's gotten. Three times now? Two times? That he's just gotten instantly killed before the chrono yeah, comes off? He's really not had a chance to use that chrono at all recently. Despite going for this BKB build. Yeah. Well. He wanted to go for the yeah. Shadow Blade so he can be kind of cheeky and get into the fights, but the gems and with the Sentry Wards and just the overall map control and awareness by DC, he hasn't been able to get those good chronos too often. Mason, DC about to be finished up. That was our silencer. Solo Crest! Dubu's got items! Holy crap! Dubu never gets items in this. Very rarely. Very good item in this game. Versus the Void. Probably wants to get himself a 4 step next if, if possible. Him and Bulba. Bulba actually going for the Yules instead. They don't really feel like the clockwork's too much of an issue in that case. I mean, certainly in the last 10 minutes or so, it certainly seems to have felt that way. Raging Potato unable to contribute too much. He just sips in. The hook shot gets taken down, but the solo crest now may start to certainly help him in that, in that aspect, but 
Obviously with the build he has, no sort of blade mail to put DC off from committing and killing him. Yeah, that's the that's the one thing is like usually you get that blade mail for that yeah. exact reason. It's like you just go and you like use your spells, especially because like Sen can't really control all of his damage, it's just gonna be coming out naturally, and then Sven can also, you know, the cleave will naturally hit other people. Control that so much. But yeah, it's it's hard because then like Potato maybe treats himself as a different hero as well, right? So, in, ideally, you want to be able to start the fight as a clockwork, and then Void can counter-initiate. But what's been happening in a lot of these situations, it's Void walking up with the Shadow Blade trying to start the fight, and he just dies. Yeah. So I think they should be doing it the opposite way. I think Potato needs to just try to hook shot in, and then hope that DC kind of, like, stacks on top of it, and then they get the follow-up from the Void. Because the global will probably be expended instantly as soon as clock goes. It's very hard to take those fights, though, still. Playing into global and taking team fights versus global is a very difficult thing, always. They've got Guardian Greaves at least now on Lumic, so he can he can move it from himself. But other than that, they've got no other Lotus Orbs just yet to remove it off people. They've got BKBs, of course, on the court. Clockwork's building toward that Lotus next. Playing very farming oriented though on this Clockwork. They're not really looking to make a plays on Execration. They're trying to make a play onto Potato now. Yep. Jump for Mason. Lands the first stun. Does this still somehow manage to get it? Get the, the force out as he gets forced back, but they've got the control oh. in the sprout. It's gonna be Sam going down. Four, four have actually just trapped Bulba. <laughs> now on the side, Nando gets the chrono onto Dubu. They can get some more out of this. They put the BKB. Dubu should be a goner. Abed, he potentially is in trouble as well. Will use up to remove the silence, but he get gets the stunned the up. There's the control and DC. Oh no. What is going on? I mean, that. I got a little confused there when that, that Sprout and Flare was there. I was like, oh, they, they've got him. The Sprout, the Flare combo. And then I was like, hang on. For him just sprouted Sky Bulba. Sky not on the, <laughs> the Nature's Prophet's side. What's happening? He was trying to push Bulba out, oh. but yeah, unfortunately, he keeps him stuck inside. Yeah, DC trying to go for the kill on Potato, but he is pretty durable. I mean, he's built, he has 31 armor on this clockwork now, building up that plate no solar crest, and beautiful four step coming out from him. I believe it was the glitch. And they get. Yeah, they're gonna get a good bit of push off the back of it as well. James, with the man of the form, take down a Tutu Mason, looking for Nando. Nando gets forced away. They've got the global silence. They do get the kill. Taking down one. They're gonna get more out of this as well. By looks of it, indeed, they get a pretty hefty cleanup. Oh, Dubu just runs in. He's like, wait, <laughs> gets plus four in. Wait, when his team team just cleans those up. Great jumps though. Big Probably hole. when like. You're going for those type of sieges. This is the best play that a team can do is you have a teammate dead and you just make that kind of jump when you're confident because you know you have the damage anyway. Use the global, jump instantly, kill the void. There's no way execration expects that to happen. Punk is dead. It's all about the element of surprise. The Lotus now finished on potato as well, so. Which a bit of save potentially against that orchid. The puck silence, allowing Nando to have that second chance to, to get a chrono out, even if he does not have the PKB ready. Which one are you talking about? Uh, Lotus on the, the clock now. Oh yeah, Lotus on the clock now. Yep. I'm gonna He's have to pull it back. It's very durable. Now you can remove the silence yeah. and others. So. I mean, Potato is super farmed this game. We can't say he's not. He's got 218 CS as a damn clockwork. That's pretty crap. I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah, he has he has 50 more last hits than his void. He had he was farming for quite a long time in that uh, hard camp area on the left side. Now Mason will be now looking for the Daedalus after that AC, and he is well on the way towards it. 3k gold in the bank. Top of the CS, of course, still on the Sven and net worth. Also 18,000. Freya very close behind me. Freya's been doing a great job as well. Yeah. Keeping those lanes pushed in, consistently picking up the farm, and he is going to be en route to have a, a pretty respectable timing on this Hex than he nearly has done. Okay, cool. I, you, I remember you were saying like the Bloodthorn. I was thinking, I'm like, Bloodthorn's great, but they already have like the BKBs yeah, they got the course, yeah, so you're right. getting yeah. that Hex is yeah. definitely going to be like the guaranteed lockdown. Yeah, but yeah, there is a Lotus Whip as well that can remove the Hex. But yeah, this is been constantly DC just shoving the lanes in, forcing every single one in, and Execration unable to push them out at the same pace. But DC gets a lot more of the map. They've got like 90% of the map to farm in comparison. DC 
see how heavy they want to go in with this push. I mean, Mason still has that money to spend. Probably not feeling in too much pressure. Yeah, they probably wait for wait for the next rush. Wait for next engagement happen. But same thing, they can perch themselves up on the high ground and hope that execration kind of runs into them. I actually got the full out silver edge now as well on for it. And uh, actually, he's changing it up. Doesn't want to get this, the, the hex. Now looking for BKB. So, I mean, obviously the silver edge is it's going to be fairly nice. I'll take down that DK. Yeah, I mean, Dragon's Blood is no yeah. joke, especially once he hits level 25 with that double Dragon's Blood. That'll be very useful. So, Smoke coming out. Execration trying to take a fight here. All the lanes are pretty shoved in, though. Clockwork showed bottom. Dubu might be the culprit here, though. He showed for a moment. For something here. They may have to commit the chrono if they want the kill. Unless they get a few good bashes. I guess he got the diffuser. Yeah, he doesn't need the chrono. You're right, they get the chase now down, they get the one down. The back. Potato, it's Mason in it. Mason and Boba find the clockwork is quickly blow him up. No problem in that Mason. Mason he's, well, he wants to push, yeah. He's got the god strength. He's straight up there. They do still have the chronosphere. Fortification as well. Chain Frost gets thrown out. It'll clean out the Crete wave at least, but that's gonna be the Chain Frost gone. Mason ready to move back in up to the high ground. Look at the tier three. Outside of it all, the chrono has been dropped. But it's ended up wait. It didn't get anybody. Wait. He just it didn't do anything indeed. It just held back his own teammate. Nando will be lucky to get out, but Is that both BKBs as well? That was both it BKBs. Looked like it was not, the not quite sure what Chrono? happened there, but that yes. was not the play for execration. And everybody on DC's alive, they still have global too. Sixty seconds without that Dragonite. That's a long time. Big mistakes coming up from execration there. DC capitalizing it big time. And now all the ults are used. How long do we have on Chrono then? So it's 72 seconds. And how long on Rush? It's a long spawn. They get a bit unlucky. Two, two minutes spawn for that, for that one. For DC. But either way, they still have absolute map control. Like we said, there's no great way for Execration to push lanes out. So 4F as the Nature's Prophet always just keeps pushing them in. Same thing with Abed. And they are always able to take the fights when they want to on the side of DC. Farm everything. Mason, very close to having a full Daedalus. And nearly that level 25 as well. Krev also the money to finish up that BKB if he so wishes. And so having a bit on top, and of course, Arbed now looking to scale up with the Dagons. The game goes on. But yeah, definitely now this sizable lead for DC 12k gold lead. Yeah, just a few mistakes starting to slip through the cracks from Execration. Mm -hmm. DC not slipping up one bit as we get into this later portion of the game. They just have so many places to farm. They yeah. have so much liberty and freedom on this in this game. They're just like, okay, we can farm mid, we can farm top. Or I just keep pushing up bottom. Mason can farm jungle. While Execration is like desperately trying to push lanes out, but they keep emphasizing they just can't quickly. So all their movements are pretty telltale for DC. Nando, of course, certainly starting to fall behind with this. The, the way he's had, he's been playing, and you know, understand him so. He's been trying to make these chronos work, but it's just the fact that DC have been so well prepared for them. Yeah, as we saw there, even with the last one getting through, I believe I mean, he must have just landed it and then not caught out one of the stunners, and and uh, he was just held in place in that chrono. Couldn't do anything, especially with the fact that he caught his own DK in the chrono as well. Yeah. Yeah, he's been spending a lot of time just shadow bladed up looking for these pickoffs while like, it's a clockwork kind of farming, which I feel like, you know, the opposite is the ideal. You know, you want your void to be getting more of that farm while the clockwork looks for those pickoffs. Yeah, just look at I me. Mean, look, we look at CS. Sometimes creep score doesn't matter so much, but Rage Potato, 260 creep score to the 200 of his void. Yeah. So he's been spending, he said, a majority of his time farming. Trying to try to get some pickoffs and they didn't work out. So maybe that's why he went back to the farming thing, but his void is definitely suffering and because of it. And he's going back for that. He's got the blade mount now, but it's a very late blade mount. They see Nando. They have an obs in a sentry there. He's going to just get brought down. They lose the vision for a second, though. 
and he actually just pops BKB and he's able to get a decent card up. Can they get kills off the back of this though? They need more damage and they need it soon. James is there, the global comes out, and now DC, they could turn. The Chrono's gone, Arbet jumps forward, gets the two-man silence, Dream Call as well. Mystic Flare gonna be off the point, Mason gets the chance for the BKB and Goldstrike to come out. They've taken down Nando, they look towards the Potato, they've lost RR on the Lich. Execration, two men down already. Dubu falling incredibly low, James still fighting strong though, and will be able to help them take down two. They've found the Sven and the Silencer. In fact, they may just get Bulber as well. He'll use himself up. Up. They're going to be able to take down Sam. Double kill for James. Arbed hiding in the pit. Trying to get himself out of there. Forever will manage to find the side kill. On to Lumix Skyra. But Execration into the pit. They did buy back, of course, with Nando for this one. They really want to get Roshan. And I think they may just be able to do it with DC having three members down. If they get Roche in the Aegis on Nando, that buyback is certainly worth it. Warwick should be courting bottom right away. Be able to push his lanes out. Put, or port, port mid, take the racks. Yeah, yeah he's gone. He do. Going for the rat. Can Execration do anything to react to this one? They are playing around with R, but they may even get the kill. But they're not getting the Roche. It's like half HP, and now they lose a Rax. Abed's just toying with him too. He's just making so much space during all this oh, time. Oh, okay, and that and certainly that, was, that just becomes absolutely not worth them. And that was a void buyback for too. Yeah, for him to try to go for that. And they they get the lesser trade, if a trade at all. And, and as you say, they don't. The Roshan's still up. They've lost that Rax. Yeah, DC still keeping the call cool despite that fight. Well, we did see you know, James doing a lot there with the AC and the Elder Dragon form. Still not something that you can forget about. Yeah, he was outside of the Chrono, so he's able to yeah. wail on Mason. Mason got full duration chrono, then he got full duration dragon tail stunt. He's about half HP, pops the god strength BKB, clockwork hook shots him, and Mason has no target. So Mason turns and starts hitting clockwork, but right before that fight, Potato built blade mail. So he actually pretty much killed himself on the blade mail. So Mason got brought down pretty early in that fight, but it was Forev and Abed able to do enough work in the back lines. And now top tower dead, mid racks cleaned up, bottom tower took a decent beating as well. We have level 25 on Nature's Prophet, so double Treant HP yeah. damage for him to get that siege going. And Nando's in the pit. They do have Chrono. They can try and fight around here and look to secure the Roshan. DC's got everything, and they're even already... Forab's getting prepared to port top and go for those Raxes. He's already cancelled the TP once. He's starting it again. It really is the rat potential that they've got to be worried about, Execration. The, the back door is like, still on, though. He's still taking it. And in fact... I mean, they're sticking oh, around for Roche. Mason finds the two yeah, he in comes the in on the side with the BKB and the Godstrike. He's going to look towards James. James trying to man up. But Mason, can he do this? He's been disarmed. Backing away. Nando comes in, but there's Bulba. And setting up for the triple kill. And this may all be over for Execration as they start falling apart. Forev still there with the wrap, with the split push. Potato is down. A second set of racks gone. The clock will buy back. But DC can pretty much clean up the pace now. 25k gold lead. They don't even need to stick around for Roshan. They just come in for the glory, come in for the kills. And DC, similar to the series we saw last, just being the team to make the smarter calls and, and at the end of the day, just the numerous outplays as they, they make the better moves and execration struggle to keep up. Yeah, I think that that's a very good summation of it. I think also they have the a draft that I'll keep saying it. I know Blitz is one that really likes to say this because it's very true. It's They can keep the lanes pushed in all the time, so yeah. DC is always able to take the better fights. And Execration feels, they feel kind of in a desperate maneuver because they're like, all the lanes are constantly throwing at us. We need to just smoke up and go. But it's kind of obvious, so DC purchased himself on high ground. But yeah, they. I think we, we also said it. They did have a little bit of a strange draft. Potato farmed a lot. Void got under-farmed. The two supports fall off very hard. BKBs get picked up, and Skyrath, Lich just become very irrelevant and then on top of that Dubu's globals were pretty on point this game yeah great great science pick and and of course the Sven and the Sven the yeah Sven, Sven just looking Sven amazing good. yeah especially under the hands of people like Rezo and Mason yeah who are incredibly good at finding that farm knowing when to turn up to the fights and yeah despite Execration's best efforts they will drop game one DC taking the victory don't go anywhere ladies and gentlemen we're gonna be out for game two to see what goes on then we'll see you in a minute